reference is often made to another classic essay by Malthus, Essay on Population. How well read is this piece, and how well understood is it? Well, in the first place, they've never read it. Whether they praise it or damn it, they probably haven't read it. So that's the first sin. Uh, now, Malthus has basically two points to make, two ways of analyzing things. Uh, one is, how fast do people, does a population increase? And there he had the right idea, the population inherently increases, as we would say, exponentially. That's like compound interest. And there's no limit to a, a population increasing by compound interest. Then his second law was that uh, the uh, rate at which we learn to uh, exploit the environment, I'm putting this in modern terms, uh, is not like compound interest. It's like uh, interest that isn't compounded. You get increased 3% a year after year after year. See, uh, whereas you don't ac accumulate this, you don't uh, get interest on the interest you had last year, whereas population you get interest on the interest you had last year. You see, and that's the trouble. Well, now, uh, he, unfortunately, he was too specific about the way at which there is progress in, say, in scientific matters. And he didn't foresee, he didn't realize he was living at the beginning of the scientific revolution, and he didn't see this and didn't see that we're going to learn faster and faster for a while how to exploit the environment. He didn't see this, and so it's easy to criticize Malthus for not seeing what nobody else was seeing either. Aren't a lot of scientists, especially biologists from the last century, like Charles Darwin, misunderstood? Oh, sure. Uh, but uh, one thing we have to keep in mind, particularly in America, you know, we have constant uh, friction over the business of Darwin's idea of evolution. And uh, this doesn't occur in Europe. There's never been this amount of friction. Uh, had a certain amount of arguments, much the same as ours, and then they thought, really, this is nothing to be fussing about. And so all these classic Darwin, anti-Darwin uh, fights that we get into in this country are peculiarly American. So the problem is, why are they peculiarly American? Why do we do it and other people don't? Well, maybe I'm not the person to say this is a sociological problem, and it's, it's a fascinating one. But uh, I think uh, this is really very, well, let me put it this way. Darwin really emphasized two things. One was evolution, and the other was natural selection. Now, in the case of evolution, this is just a historical idea, and the evidence for or against is historical. Did Julius Caesar exist? That's a historical question. And somehow you never settle historical questions uh, with the certainty that you settle scientific questions, is gravity a factor in earthly living? Well, it is, and you can show it scientifically, because you don't have to go back to uh, 2000 BC to look at it or anything of that sort. Uh, so, and the evo by the way, the evolution thing was not original with Darwin. There were scads of people before him who had the idea, but they couldn't think of a mechanism. What he contributed was the mechanism over production of individuals followed by, logically followed, by a natural selection. And that's what makes the whole system work. Now that is a scientific question, and we can prove, we have proved that scientifically, time after time after time, and nobody has disproved it. And so, unfortunately, people who throw out the Darwinian ideas, they think, uh, uh, not only for throwing out the historical idea, but also the scientific idea. And as far as the historical idea, if somebody wants to, uh, is concerned, if somebody wants to throw out Julius Caesar, I really don't care. <laughs> if you say he didn't exist, okay, I say, well, I think he did, but I'm not going to fight about it. But if you say natural selection doesn't exist, I say, boy, you're, you're in for trouble if you think it doesn't exist. Because a, a doctor gives you, say, a, uh, an antibiotic to cure some disease you have, and you take massive doses of it, and continue taking it, though he told you to take it for only two weeks. And as you continue taking it, you select for the germs that are resistant to that dosage, and you may end up killing yourself by an overdosage of a curative drug. And that's Darwinism. 
What about the concept that ecologists maintain that everything is connected? Oh, it's connected. You know, but that doesn't mean you like all the connections. But there's also quantity to it, and this comes back to the business that the maximum is seldom or never the optimum. So whatever it is, don't do it too long. If it's a, if it's a, a, a medical procedure, don't do it too long. Don't do it too much. A little bit may good, a lot of it may kill you. If we take that concept that the maximum is not the optimum, yeah. that would mean that our planet may be able to handle more people on the Earth in actual numbers, but that's not the best quality of life that we would be able to obtain. Yeah, well, just consider what uh, we've done with uh, uh, traffic uh, on the highways. You see, we have a two-lane highway, and we get too many cars on it, and we say, well, we've got to build more lanes. There's a need for more lanes, therefore we, we will have, increase the supply and that'll take care of the need. We increase the supply and what happens? More cars appear to take advantage of this. Then we say, well, four's not enough, we'll build six. And you keep doing that. You see, the point is, there's no way that you get in a finite environment that you can satisfy a need that is uncontrollable, the growth of which is uncontrollable. Sometime you've got to say, enough's enough, and now we're going to stop, and we're going to ration, we're going to force birth control on automobiles and sometime we've got to do that we do it at the present time indirectly by taxes and so forth and so on people still don't react strongly enough which means we really should increase the taxes on the gasoline and everything else uh, people could learn if we would give them a chance but unfortunately the ones who need to be given the chance are the ones who have to vote in the chance vote for uh, legislators who will do that